Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And this time I want to talk about how we can use dictionaries to count things. This is a really common use for dictionaries in Python. And let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's say here I ask the user to enter a word. So word equals input, enter a word. And I want to know how many times each letter appears in the word. And I want to keep track of it in a dictionary. So I want to show you four different ways we can do that. And in doing so, you'll understand how we can use dictionaries and things related to dictionaries um, as these sorts of accumulation systems or warehouses. So the first thing I can do is I can say like counts equals a plain old dictionary. And then what I want to do is say for one letter in Word, what I want to do is say counts of one letter plus equal one, and then we'll print counts. Of course, this won't work. It won't work because testing. Because as soon as we get to the first T there, what's going to happen is we're going to iterate over each letter. We're going to get to this first T. And then we're going to run this line. And this line is basically equivalent to saying counts of one letter equals counts of one letter plus one. So what's going to happen there? Well, always in assignment, it's right side before left side. So Python's going to go over to the right side. It's going to say, hey, counts, give me the value that's associated with a key for one letter, in this case, the letter T. But the dictionary is empty. The dictionary doesn't have anything yet. And so it immediately dies. And that's what we see here, that it has a key error T. So what we really need to do is we need to make sure that that key, the letter T, is in there as a key before we retrieve from it. So one option for doing this is saying, if one letter in counts, meaning if the letter is already a key in the counts dictionary, then we'll increment it. Otherwise, we'll say counts of one letter equals one. Meaning, you know, we've seen it before, increment. As opposed to never saw it before, set it to one. And if we do this now, we'll see that if I do testing, it'll say that T appeared twice, and E appeared once, and S appeared once, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this happens to be true. So this is the first way of dealing with this sort of problem. Um, what's a second way? A second way is actually pretty closely related to this. What I can do is I can, before I even get to the incrementing, I can say if one letter not in counts, and then I'll just sort of set it. So I can say counts of one letter equals zero. If I do that, then I know that by the time I get down to this, or, or, or let me just rejigger this a little bit, by the time I get to this line, we've always seen it before. The first time we've seen it before just in this line right above, but in subsequent times we've seen it before. And so this has exactly the same effect. And if I do testing now, we're going to get the same answer as well. Um, I don't really have a strong preference as to which style is better. Um, I think this is a little clearer. But you'll see there are some other ways to do this as well. OK, what's another way to do this? Well, one other way to do this, I think I miscounted how many. I think I said I was going to give you four ways. I'm going to give you five ways. How exciting. I can also say something like this. Counts of one letter equals, and watch this, counts get one letter zero plus one. Now, what in the world is going on here? Well, the get method is just like square brackets in that it's going to retrieve the value based on a key but it also is more forgiving. By default, if I just say counts.get of one letter, if the key is there, I'll get the value, just like square brackets. If the key is not there, I'll get none. But in this instance, what I've done is I've used get with one letter, the key, and then zero, that's my new default. So the first time I retrieve the value with one letter from the dictionary, it says, I don't have this value, so I'll give you zero as a default. This is like square brackets with a default. That's how you can think of it. And so actually, this is going to work just fine, testing, and we get the same result as before. OK, how can we make this a little more interesting, a little more robust? Well, we can use what's called a default dict. Default dict is a dictionary. It's a class that inherits from dictionary, but allows you to set a default, hence the name default dict. Oh, they're so clever with naming. So I can say here, from collections, import default dict. And then what I can do is say, counts equals a default dict. And then I can say for, by the way, this won't work just yet, letter in Word. And I can say counts of one letter plus equal one, print counts. Now, this is how we would sort of expect it to work, right? But this won't work because you need to tell default dict how you want to set up the default. What do you want to happen if the key is not there? And your instinct might be to say, oh, I'll just use zero here, right? Because if 
if we request a key, if we request a value based on a key and the key doesn't exist, I want zero. This will not work. What you actually need to do is provide a callable. You actually need to provide a class or a function that will be invoked if the key does not exist. So the first time you turn to the default dict and you ask for a key that doesn't exist, it will call int as a function. Int as a function with no arguments returns zero, and that zero will be stuck in there as a value. And sure enough, if I now say, well, I didn't even ask for the word, right? But now we see t2 e1 s1 and the printed representation of default dict is a little different from regular dictionaries because it also has to have this callable this default here um, but it is a dictionary in every way so i can say for key value in uh counts items you know print key colon value and that'll work just fine right so here i get the keys and the values the final way that we can try to do this is with one of my favorites, the counter. And the counter is a kind of dictionary. It inherits from dictionary, but it works a little differently. So what I can do is I can say from collections import counter. And then I can say counter of word. Notice that I'm creating a new counter object based on the word that I received. And look what it does. It goes through the word and it counts how many times each thing appears here. It does exactly what I did, but I don't have to write any code. I can just hand it to counter. And indeed, if I say C equals counter of word, and then C most common, it'll even tell me, well, here's the same thing, but it'll tell me what were the most common. It returns a list of tuples in which I have the letters here and then the number of times each thing appears. Anyway, that is how we can count how many times a letter appears in a word. I hope you see how we can use dictionaries now and their uh, descendants to count different types of letters, different types of elements in a list, even we don't know what they are in advance. If you have questions, comments about Python, send them to me on Twitter via email. I look forward to getting them, and I'll be back soon with another video.